And coming up next here on Coast to Coast, we head to Carmel, California, where you can find some of the most luxurious masterpieces, McLaren and Ferrari. Blue chip is a term reserved for the best of the best. Whether the topic is real estate, stocks, or in this case, collector car automobiles, everyone desires a blue chip. If you'd like to see firsthand qualities of a blue chip collector car, then you won't want to miss this episode of the Speed Journal. We're at Bonham's Quail Lodge Auction in beautiful Carmel, California. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Michael Caimano. Michael, how are you? Great, how are you? All right, great, nice yeah, to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming by. You're with Bonham's Auction, yes, and you're going to present a beautiful McLaren F1 to us. I am, I am uh, graced with the, uh, the opportunity to do so. Yes. Uh, it's a 1995 McLaren F1. Uh, it's being presented by the original owner. Uh, he flew over to the UK and took factory delivery of the car, mm. uh, at which point he went on a tour of Europe, uh, which is, accounts for almost half of the mileage that's on the car today. Interesting. Yeah, uh, he describes it as the uh, trip of a lifetime, as you can imagine. Today, the car has just over 9,000 miles on it. Uh, again, half of those were, were within the first uh, few weeks there. And since then, it's been uh, kept on the East Coast and religiously maintained uh, at McLaren. We have mm -hmm. all of the service history for the car. Now, you had an opportunity to actually drive this car at Lime Rock? We did. So part of the promotion of the car, we took it down to Lime Rock and created a video um, just because something so special and, and unique such as this car, uh, most people don't get to see it in action. You just see static photos of it uh, most of the time in a studio somewhere. Right. So we thought it would be a great opportunity to uh, you know, let the car do what it's supposed to and, and bring it out to the track and get some good audio and, and visual um, experience with it. So uh, when the car came out, it was the fastest naturally aspirated car to ever uh, you know, be produced. It would do 240 miles an hour. And what's interesting is even today, all these years later, it still holds the record as the fastest naturally aspirated car. Um, nothing has, has surpassed it. And uh, you know, from, from the makes of uh, new cars today with all the turbocharging technology, doesn't seem like any car will go in that direction again. So probably a title that, that this will hold on to. Everything is about weight, aerodynamics, and, and power. Um, it is the it holds true to the ultimate driving machine. Are there any rumors as far as value or what a car like this might sell for? So, um, you know, it, it's very difficult to put a value on a car um, such as this. Uh, a, a McLaren F1 with this pedigree and history has never publicly been offered before. Uh, so it's difficult to say, but we certainly hope and expect it to exceed the, uh, the previous record of, of, of 13,750 for sure. I'm sure you'll be on pins and needles when that's on the blog. It will be very exciting. Um, you know, it's not often that uh, we get to offer or that the market has the opportunity to purchase a car mm -hmm. with this kind of history and provenance and collectability. Um, it's, it's what a lot of people consider a, a blue chip car. Uh, it kind of checks off all the right boxes. I'd like to introduce you to Rupert Banner. Rupert, how are you? Very well. Nice to see you. Thank you. You too. Rupert's with Bottoms Auction and he's going to describe to us this beautiful Maserati 300S. I certainly will. So what we have here is a, a 1956 Maserati 300S. It's uh, contemporaneous with the Grand Prix cars, with, which Maserati were, were so well known for and um, were winning the uh, World Championship in, the, in those days. Uh, this is a sports racing car from the same stable. Maserati in those days was, was all about racing. And this is one of the definitive cars of its era. Um, you've got the, the six cylinder the motor. They were just well, well known for, for the uh, ability to campaign all of the sports car races. They did everything in the days as well. They did circuit racing, they did uh, the long distance tours, the Mille Miglia, etc. And so for that reason, you've got a car that, because it was great in its day, it means you can do an awful lot with it today. Tell us about its history, the important drivers it's had. Well, it's, um, I mean, I think if you, if you think of Maserati and if you think of uh, drivers in that era, I mean, this is, a, this is a fabulous combination. This is actually a Fangio car. Manuel Fangio, who was just to many the greatest. You know, mm -hmm. when you when you hear other other drivers who were contemporaries of him 
who you think were luminaries, say, like Sir Sterling Moss, to say that Fangio was the best, I think that, that puts it into you know, its own context. It, it says that it's, it, it's probably true, that he was the greatest. And in truth, if you take any serious sports car racing, uh, sports, sports car from that racing era, you're looking at numbers in that, in that territory and upwards. Obviously, if, you, you know, if you're talking about Le Mans winning Ferraris and stuff, you're, you're adding multiples to that. But it's, it's really, it represents, I think, pretty good value for, for what you can do um, and for its importance and for the name association as well. It checks off many boxes, doesn't it? It certainly does, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Rupert, we thank you so much for your time. Great description of this car. Wish you the best of luck when this goes over the block. We're looking forward to it. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you, Rupert. I expect there will be more than a few new delighted owners as these collectibles change hands this weekend. We'd like to thank Bonhams and their team of specialists for showcasing these fascinating cars. And we'd like to thank you for joining the Speed Journal.